Bethesda have just released Starfield's latest update on all platforms. Now this is update 1.8.86 and it released on November the 20th. Sorry I'm a little bit late, I got caught up, I didn't even realise this one had dropped. Now this update was launched earlier in the month for PC only. Now it is available on Xbox also. Now it is also available on Xbox. Now this update is very PC heavy. There's a lot of PC stuff that's on there but there's also some pretty cool features and a whole host of fixes. Now, if you are a fan of Starfield, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video. I was also thinking of looking into covering potentially um, maybe Destiny. I've loved Destiny for a long time. Um, I was thinking of maybe adding it to the roster on the channel. Uh, just maybe one or two videos a week to replace the shorts. The Starfield main content will continue to come. But recently, I've, I've got back into Destiny and I love the game. It's one of my favorites. Has been for a very long time. So, you know, let me know what you think down below. Now, the latest update is 1.8.86, and it released on November the 20th. Now, as I say, it is mainly for PC. There's a lot of PC fixes, but there are some cool things, and as well as major fixes for everybody. Now, the update is available on all platforms, and the main highlight of this one is DLSS support, which is obviously a PC. It's a graphics card um, driver or something along those lines. I don't know. I use AMD, but it's something to help improve the performance of nvidia cards now originally they're released with amd software which is not really the norm so i don't understand why they did that but now dlss support is available it was previously available through the use of mods but for people that weren't modding it is now available for everyone as well as that they've also added the let them eat which is something that people have wanted for a very long time and it's such a strange thing. But they've added the ability to ingest food and drink items when you find them in your environment. You can now enjoy things immediately or save them for later. Now those are the two main highlights, which, to be honest, is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping that we'd get to see many more updates between the launch and Christmas, but they are focusing on some big things for 2024, such as mod support for everybody, which the mod support is very, very cool. It was awesome on, I think, Fallout 4 had it, um, and it, it just enables you to do anything in the game, basically, and that will be available on console as well, which is quite cool. The saves you going through all the funky stuff of, of changing files and all of that jazz um as well as that they are obviously working on the dlc uh people have seen some little bits to do with the the actual starship building system which looks really cool is available now through mods but all of the work is there for a starship um building prospect basically same as you do with your standard ships you can actually build star stations like the den or the eye which will be very very cool and it looks loads and loads of fun. As well as that, there's got fixes and improvements. Now, whether that will launch as a paid DLC or in some form of update, we don't actually know. But it is looking that the update could potentially be around about April um, for the latest DLC, which will be, I think it was Shattered Space, I think they called it. Um, it was something like that. But the name sounds really cool anyway. I don't know what it is. Nobody knows what it is yet. I'm hoping it's got a little bit more to do with the Starborn aspects of the game. Because although it is a cool aspect, it's not really touched upon too much once you've gone through that new game plus. Which is a little bit of a shame. It would be nice to see different universes play out a little bit more. Now with this update, as well as those two major things, there's been loads of fixes and improvements. Mainly to performance and stability, which uh, addresses a number of PC issues more than anything. But they are a number of memory related issues and leaks, GPU performance optimizations, which are impactful on higher end cards, and improved CPU usage, most notably on high end systems, alongside various stability and performance improvements, which are available on Xbox and on PC. Now, for the gameplay, they've changed a few little things. As we mentioned, being able to eat food that is placed in the world. They've also made some tweaks to stealth to make it more forgiving and fixed issues where Andreas' head would stay permanently cloaked. There's other things that prevent players from firing weapons, issues where NPCs were running around in their underwear, which, yeah, why not? I mean, it looks warm in New Atlantis. You never know, you might be all right. And there's definitely a few planets out there where it's definitely warm enough. Now, it fixed issues where progress skill changes would stop progressing after reaching Unity. Um, issues which would temporarily prevent opening the inventory after saving or entering Unity. Issues where mouse movement could be choppy. Rare issues that caused home ships to be lost. Issues where services technicians might be missing. And some things where cameras would shake incorrectly whilst grav jumping, docking or in landing transitions. Now, with graphical changes, there are quite a few there uh, when it comes to field of view sliders, uh, HDR support, all of that kind of stuff. 
but mainly a lot of fixes when it comes to quests, which is good. Now, we'll have a look at the graphics ones. There are a few that are, once I say... <clears throat> there are a couple that are mainly bogged into PC, such as HDR brightness support, uh, Windows X, Windows 11 and Xbox, um, issues where ambient occlusion appeared in ultra-wide resolutions, shader compilation that occurs on startup, adjusting brightness and contrast settings in the display menu which is good i love a brightness setting especially if you're playing horror games you need those brightness settings all the way up uh, various issues with field view sliders appearance of eyes on the crowd characters addressed a number of minor visual issues related to lighting shadows terrain and vegetation and they've also addressed additional issues that are related to dlss which is a pc issue now quests for the ones that they fixed they have fixed all that money can buy Blast Zone, Echoes of the Past, Eye of the Storm, Grunt Work, No Sudden Moves, Operation Starseed, Sabotage, Short Sighted, and The Heart of Mars. Now, those are, yep, good. Any quest fixes is a good quest fix, because it's nothing more alluring than progressing through the game and getting bogged down on little random quests, because some things wouldn't work properly. So, luckily, they have gone in there and they've sorted that out, which is nice. I'm glad that they've done that. Now, as I was mentioning at the start of the video, I was thinking of looking into some other games as well. Now, you may have noticed we covered Hyperspace, and that did relatively well, so big thank you to everybody for that. But currently, we're uploading um, two shorts, main video, two shorts, main video. Um, that's that's my plan going forward, anyway. Um, at the moment, there's nothing to really post about daily. I am working on loads of random little bits in the background. It's just those things that take a lot of time, so I'm just doing little bits here and there. Um, and then I end up getting bogged down by fighting someone, and then I'm like, yeah, let's do this, and then I get sidetracked. So concentration is an issue when it comes to some of those longer ones. But um, things like where everything is on Earth, um, looking at a rare weapons video, um, an old weapons video, which will be quite cool. Um, loads of random little bits like that. So if there's anything that you guys want to see, let me know down in the comments below. But Starfield will always be a focus. But I'm thinking of doing some other stuff that's space related too. So like I say, Hyperspace did well, so a massive thank you for that. I've been looking at Squadron 42, I think it is, which looks very, very interesting. But I like Destiny. Destiny's always been a good game. I know that's more of an FPS than a space game. But could just be something we have a little bit of a play around on. And they're continually updating that with regular bits and bobs. So, yeah, definitely interesting. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see what where we go with that one. But now, though, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to wrap this one up there. Massive thank you for all the support over the past few weeks and months. Really appreciate it. We're going to be covering everything Starfield and a lot quicker than what we did with today's video. So apologies for the lateness on that one. But now, though, I've been Cowboy. You guys have been awesome. Massive thank you to everybody that has watched. And we'll see you very soon with some more Starfield.